Hi, folks. Larry Berman here, and here's what's on my radar this week. Well, certainly, you know, celebrating non-farm payroll report day is, is something that on a monthly basis, you know, by far the most important economic indicator that, you know, we have to look at as, as analysts. Now, obviously, there, there are others, um, but, you know, let, let's have a look here because there's quite, been quite a divergence from consensus this month and, and also uh, from recent trends. So the change in non-farm payrolls this month was actually expected to be around 250. The range of expectations were as high as four and change. It came in at 528. And not only that, revisions to the past uh, couple months were, were revised higher as well. Um, and we can see that the prior month originally at two, uh, 372 was revised to 398. Um, you know, the unemployment rate now is back down to the lowest on record. So again, the, the question here is how can a recession start with such a strong labor market? Well, if you go back and look at the last 50 years, a recession always starts with a very, very, uh, tight labor market reason being is because the Fed is taking the punch bowl away. Now, the next big economic report here on the calendar, you could see, is the CPI report that comes out on the 10th. So we'll be watching that closely. And one of the other divergences we're seeing is now in Canada, we have back-to-back -back months of negative employment growth. And really, for a country that exports oil and gas and a lot of food, big divergence here in what's going on between the US and Canada almost unreconcilable if you if you really think about the numbers now keep in mind the the error on these reports are pretty substantial but let's see how the markets responded so on a inflation basis this is the um, one year uh, inflation swap. So it's a contract that says based on what inflation actually is in a year, you can trade that number today. So if inflation prints three and a half percent and you've done this contract today for 347, you're about break even. But if inflation, if you're long the contract and inflation comes in at five, you're making money. If you're short the contract and inflation comes in at two, you're making money. But this is the market-based price expectation of inflation a year from now. And you might ask, why on a day like today did inflation go down? Well, bond yields ripped higher pretty significantly. The, the U.S. 10-year was up 13 basis points. The 30-year was up 10 basis points. Why did inflation expectations fall? because now the Fed is fully priced for a 75 basis point, uh, basis point rate hike at the September meeting. Between here and that uh, September meeting, you have another employment report, which could change the landscape dramatically. You have the Jackson Hole meeting of the Federal Reserve, and you have two inflation numbers to come. So all this can change rapidly. But we did see, you know, equity markets sell off. We saw technology get hit more. Why? And interest rates are going up. Technology doesn't like that. Uh, the more deflationary the outlook is, the more technology does like that. And you would argue with inflation expectations down, technology should have done better and it didn't. So lots of moving parts here uh, going on uh, on the investment landscape. Uh, you know, August off to a slippery start, but still net positive in the first couple of days here, the first week of August. From an earnings standpoint, earnings expectations starting to turn down, but analysts with, with 85% of stocks now reporting in the S&P 500 after this week have still not turned down their numbers. So, 
companies are telling us they're still able to uh, generate the earnings growth that the bottom-up analysts are are looking for. And somehow this all doesn't jive. Now, a big part of that is jobs. Jobs are spending. So when do jobs start to turn down? The indications are turning in that direction. Clearly, the employment numbers today have not shown that. So where are the opportunities? For those ZWU lovers out there that are the low-risk coupon clippers, this has been a great ETF that is not designed for growth. You can see that since inception here, that this ETF is really um, designed as a range trader. One of the reasons why the trend in price is lower uh, over, over the horizon uh, of this ETF um, you know, being out in the marketplace is largely the pipeline component um, of that and the total dislike of, of energy in Canada by by the current government, I guess. Although when Harper was in, 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 in office, um, you know, we had this big move down in, in energy, but that was fracking that had nothing to do with, you know, the current government environment. Um, Anyways, again, as the bull pick of the week, guys, I like this for the coupon clippers out there. I didn't like this blowing it up in the last few months up here. I thought the risk return wasn't compelling. Um, it's more compelling, you know, below 1250. So there's an opportunity here before us. I think you can see in the last year or so below 1250 was compelling. You kind of got to throw out this period here of COVID and recovery, uh, just given what happened to oil prices. And I think, you know, this move up here was always unsustainable for the asset class. There was so much money flooding into the defensive utility names that the valuations were, were awful. So. All things considered, I, I like this ETF. I like it below 1250. I love it below $12 for the coupon clippers out there. That's our bull pick of the week. Where you need to be cautious now and where we were bullish a couple months back was on the tech space. And now that we've had this rally, we've got the falling 200 day average. There is more squeeze potential. I can make a technical case here why some point before, especially if the CPI prints, uh, you know, uh, dovishly for the market uh, on the 10th, that we could squeeze up towards the Jackson Hole a little bit more here. But very, very strong conviction that technology is going to roll over again and that we will get into an economic environment where you've got an undercut of these June lows to come in the tech space. So where do you look for uh, caution? You, you look for in the big tech names at this point. Uh, again, Apple at approaching 170. To me, there's not a lot of value there. Um, a few months ago when Apple was testing 130 uh, and lower, I think Apple is, is a stock you want in your portfolio. Good company, not a great stock. That applies pretty much for the whole NASDAQ here. Anyways, have a great week, everybody. Uh, enjoy the rest of the summer months as the weather just gets, gets spectacular in August. Have a good one.